Which of these three powerful mock frames will win the new two-run challenge? So here's the new racetrack. The new racetrack is 45 meters in length. It's got two slopes. It has ascending and descending slope. It's got six straightaways, 20 curves, one wave, and one lane changer. According to my calculations here, we have 32 total pieces. So we have 6.25% of those are slopes, and that's the two pieces. We have 18.75% are straights. We also have 62.5% are curves, and 9.375% our lane changer. So the lane changer is three pieces and that's why you have that 9.375%. So we have more than three times the number of curves than straights. So let's take a closer look at these three Toon Class cars and we'll see which one might reign supreme. Our three cars are nicknamed Voltron, Eagle, and Iron Man. And so each of these, as you see here, was built for a different purpose. There have been uh, some modifications here and there along the way. Uh, so I can tell you about what they are and why I decided to change the uh, configuration of the car. So here we start off with the first one, Voltron. With the previous configuration of Voltron, by including palm burgers on the very top, and I replaced them with these 9mm rollers because I wanted more stability, and I wanted them to be a little bit bigger than what they were. So the little palm rollers were fine on relatively flat tracks, but if the tracks had any sorts of jumps or anything like that, then this would be the course out king. So here we have regular sized wheels. These are 26 millimeter tires. They are low fricks tires with carbon wheels. And as you see here, all carbon plates, including the double front plate that I've been placing on all of my FMA chassis tune class cars lately. So we've got solid heavyweights on the sides. As you see here, it's a pancake over this this um, cylindrical column weight. On the rear, we have the cylindrical column weights. So this seems to be an, an adequate mass damper setup for this particular car. Now, as you well know, all FMA chassis are front loaded in weight because they've got the motor towards the front. So when you have your jump, your jump looks like this. There's a trajectory going on because there's that heavy weight in the front. So already there is an immediate advantage with the FMA chassis over all the other chassis that have a rear mounted engine. So I also placed the nine millimeter rollers on the front, one below the double front plate right here so that we have much more stability because here we wanted to get this roller to be at the line of the wheel or below and that'll give you greater stability with this car. As you see, both front and rear are below the midline of the wheel, pretty cool. Then we turn our attention to Eagle, and Eagle has smaller wheels, as you see here. These are carbon wheels with 24 millimeter tires, and so these are super hards, and we've got here side weights that are even heavier than what we have on Voltron. We have not only the, the column weight here, the cylindrical column weight, but we also have this uh, semi-sphere weight, which is heavier than the pancake weights. On the rear, we have semicircular weight, which is not as heavy as the cylindrical column. So on the front here, we have 11s on the top, 11 millimeter roller uh, bearings, as well as 13 millimeter rollers on the bottom. And they are, the 13 millimeter ones are below the midline of the wheel slash tire combination. Same here, 11 and 13 on the rear as well. So, with the lower wheels, this stays lower to the ground, it hugs the track better. Uh, it does weigh a little bit more than the other cars, to the tune of, well, Voltron here weighs 127 grams, and Eagle weighs 134 grams. Now, initially, I had a lot more weight on Eagle, making it 138 grams, and so I lowered it by 4 grams by reducing the mass dampers on the sides and the back. Pretty cool. Now the final car here is Iron Man. Iron Man went through several iterations. It was a car that had 26 millimeter wheels and tire combination, but now it's got 24 and I put low fricks wheels on it. So pretty cool, pretty cool. It's got this flippy back damper. So it's the only FMA chassis tune class car in this collection that actually has a, a movable rear plate. So yes, this is a special design here. It's got pancake dampers right on the flippy part, and it's got side mass dampers just like Eagle. Yes, 
pretty cool, pretty cool. The semicircular mass jumper as well as the cylindrical columnar mass jumper, very cool. On the front of though, we have 12, 13 millimeter rollers. We have on the very top, the stabilizers. And in the rear, we have 19 millimeter rollers and they spin very, very nicely, very, very nice. Engine wise, let's flip the motor and take a look at what's inside there. So we might be attaching something here soon. We'll see what goes on on the track. But here we have a torque tune engine here. We've got a 3.5 to one gear ratio in this one. We've got an atomic tune engine here. We've got a 3.7 to one gear ratio. And this one we have atomic tune engine and a 3.5 to one gear ratio. So slightly different gear and motor combinations. We're gonna see which one reigns supreme on our test track. Our first set of races involves Voltron versus Eagle, six laps. Voltron's the winner. Now, Eagle versus Voltron. And now we have Voltron versus Iron Man. The winner is Voltron. And now we have Iron Man versus Voltron. Voltron. And now we have Eagle versus Iron Man. is Eagle. And now we have Iron Man versus Eagle. And the winner is Eagle. Okay, we refreshed the batteries here. We're going to be doing two races, and if it's a tie, then we'll do a tiebreaker.
Voltron. So now we're going to swap places. Eagle versus Voltron. Not to be denied, the winner is Voltron. Okay, so let's talk about some post-race analyses. So Iron Man wasn't much of a challenge for either Voltron or Eagle. I think that the flapper mechanism on the back, I may have detrimented it in a way because I swapped out the stiff springs for softer springs. I wanted this to be a much easier to move kind of flapper. And so with the stiffer springs, I never really had much of an issue with this being a very fast car. Now, I did replace the tires on here because I felt that that the wheels and the tire combination, I felt that this would be lower to the ground and hug the track better with this smaller wheel and smaller tire combination. And I was right for a time, I was like testing this and it turned out that the smaller wheels actually helped this to stay on the track more. However, I did have stiffer springs back then, so I may swap them back out and put a stiffer spring suspension back into this whole thing. So yeah, um, I think this is a, still a very fast car. We'll just see what happens in the future. So between Eagle and Voltron, which did I think would win? I honestly thought that Eagle would win because it's a much more stable car. Voltron did course out here and there. So after I would re-race the car, it would still be faster than Eagle. Now, what are some of the reasons why such a car would be faster than this car? So here we go. We've got 3.5 to one gear ratio here. We've got a 3.7 to one gear ratio here. So very slight difference there, right? But it's enough to make this into a speedier car. So this, as you saw in the races, this ended up being faster, probably because of that gear, but also because of its cornering ability. So here we have here, if you take a look at the rollers in the front, we've got larger rollers on this one. These are more heavy duty 11 millimeter rollers on the top versus the nine millimeter rollers on the top here. We've got nines on the top and bottom in the front. We've got the heavy duty 11s and the thinner 13s in the bottom. And on the rear, we've got the same thing on Eagle. On the rear, we've got the same thing as the front for Voltron. So the rollers here are smaller, they're more lighter. Um, and I think that makes this car a little more nimble, but because of the weight difference, this has a greater tendency to course out. So I feel like maybe the back rollers here, they're not going to maintain stability because they're so small. So if you see here, this is great. These two are great for corner ability because look how close the rollers are to the wheels, right? The rollers are very close to the wheels. They both have similar powered atomic tuned engines. So let's just wipe that out as, as a, a difference. The wheels here are larger. So this is going to go a little faster also because of the wheels and the tire combination. So cornering speed, which one? This has rollers that are closer to the wheels. This has smaller rollers. So it's almost even. And then we've got bigger wheels here versus here. So this might have an edge. We've got 3.5 to one gear ratio versus 3.7 to one gear ratio. So this has a little bit of an edge. All these little bits of edges or bits of edge allow this car to overtake this car in terms of speed. Now on different tracks, we might have a different story. So if I changed this to a 3.5 to one gear ratio, this might overtake this. So yeah, it's just one of those things where trying to find the proper gear ratio, the tire and wheel combination, the rollers themselves, what types of rollers you have. The best thing to do if you're going to be racing, like seriously, is to just have a bunch of different front plates that you can interchange. So you can remove, say, this front plate and replace it with a different front plate that might have these types of rollers on them or something else other than these. So having these interchangeable front plates will be very useful come race time because then you can kind of like survey what the track is like and then make fine tune adjustments based on how the track is laid out. And so you can just change the front and the rear rollers to what the track requires. So pretty cool, pretty cool. So yes, this time Voltron was the winner, the T-Run. Next time, who knows, it might be Eagle, it might be Iron Man, yeah. Pretty cool. So everybody, here are the times for the three cars. We have here Voltron was the leader in the time attack. So six laps, 19.92 seconds. 
We have here Eagle as the second place winner, 20.12 seconds, and we have Iron Man at 20.47 seconds. Now, remember that these are time attack times for a single car. We don't know how these cars fare against each other when we're racing them side by side. That's why we do these races, so that we can test for vibration control. So that's why we did our different various combinations here. This versus this, this versus this, this versus this and flipping the first and second track so that we can see which car truly is faster so that there's no lane bias. Pretty cool. So everybody, if you like this video, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you. Bye.